Creating a KDE video community. This is a talk that I already gave at Academy. I'm doing it again to have better audio and video. And if you're wondering why should I care about better audio and video, well, we'll see it in the talk itself. So first of all, you might ask, why are you here talking about this? So what are your competencies? So let me say that I do have a channel, which is this one you're actually using to watch my content. The link is this one if you forgot how to press, you know, the big button with my name under the video down there. And if you do ask why are you doing this? Well, I think the main reason is that it helps you reach a bigger audience. It does that by A, um, actually proposing actively your content to people that maybe otherwise would have not found you. Say that one person just pops up YouTube one day and search for KDE, your videos pop up and they can discover about you. It's not that simple when you're doing blog posts, which cannot be recommended if not through social medias and uh, similar. So it helps you grow a community and also for the fact that people are, it's easier to watch videos rather than read technical blog posts. People don't want blog posts. They want something to enjoy maybe when they're having dinner or stuff. I always watch YouTube when I'm having dinner. So I like their content that can reach more users. That was my end goal. What's next? Why YouTube? So I know that YouTube isn't open source and there are some good alternatives. As an example, there's PeerTube, which is actually used by the main KDE official account. And that's really good. However, if your goal is to reach a bigger audience, well, PeerTube is not going to do it because nobody yet uses PeerTube. Maybe that will change in the future, hopefully. But right now, most of the population has the YouTube app installed and that's what you should use. Also, it gives you a lot of helpful tools and analytics to understand what of your content is working and what's not. So, super nice. Next up is filmmaking. This is not very important, but I'll just state it. I use Audacity to record audio with my microphone and I use Simple Screen Recorder, but OBS is great too. They're both open source. Uh, Simple Screen Recorder doesn't work on Wayland, but it's not very important. You can choose whatever you'd like. The second very important point is to get a decent microphone because that's really a must. I actually contacted some YouTubers and they told me focus on one thing and that is audio quality. So that's what I did, trying maybe also to do a bit of editing with Audacity. And if you want to do a good video that the people will want to watch, I think that audio is the first thing you should be looking for. The second thing is to try to edit out empty moments to make it interesting. If it feels like a recorded live stream just uploaded as is, it won't really work. Some people will watch it, some people won't. And even if you do like the most interesting stuff ever, many people will just go out of the video halfway. You can see that in analytics, but if you manage to reach, I don't know, 34, 50% of people actually going through all the video, that's a great, great result. Next is to maybe do a bit of video editing also for the music, the zoom into what you're actually using in the UI and stuff. That's useful. And it's also really good to have put a screen cap of your face, this one, mine, and your screen while you're using it. In this case, my presentation, which I like to crop because it has some black bars to the left and right. Now, how I did create the community that I currently have. So the first, actually I thought I had deleted this slide. Sorry about that. Let's skip to the next one. So first step is to actually talk about something really specific that already has a community behind it. In my case, it was KDE theming. I started talking about that. I started using the forums uh, regarding KDE theming, such as Reddit or Unixport, and I was advertising my videos there. So I kind of stole the community from there to mine, which is really useful. It's the best way to get started. And the second step is to talk about important stuff in your niche of interest. In my case, again, KDE. 
As an example, the candy releases make a lot of use because lots of people are interested in them and they Google for like Plasma 5.23 to see what's new and your video will pop up, which is very useful to, again, discover new people and rather make people discover you. The third one is to try to communicate to other niches like GNOME. One of the first videos that I've done was uh, trying out GNOME and I'm really happy about that one because it brought in a lot of uh, positive comments saying that I did the right thing and even though I did criticize some of the aspect of GNOME I also liked many others and I thought it was a pretty balanced review. So topics of course you decide, depends on your channel. In my case, I did like how to set up dev develop and, uh, developer environments, how to contribute, how to build apps, how to write a theme and so on. Uh, these are things that maybe to us developer are obvious, but I remember when I first started and actually managing to build my own app was painful. Like I always got compiled errors, I was missing packages. It was not simple at all. So having actually someone guide you through the steps, really useful. Then the coding sections, they're nice. Uh, people actually watch them, which uh, surprised me <laughs> because they're like one hour, two hour long. Now I'm trying to edit them out to be a bit shorter, but it still works as a content. The last one got like more than 1000 views, so I was really happy. And regarding the does it work, I think so, like if I watch my statistics, they've been going up for pretty much forever. Last month, of course, is um, not complete data. This screenshot is a bit old and I also took a break, but it's working. I'm seeing more, the more effort I put in, the more uh, views I get, so I'm really happy about it. And of course, I got many subscribers. I think my initial goal was to, was to make 100 and I did that in a couple of weeks. And it, it really has been awesome because I did not expect this much of a community engaging process. Like I get many, plenty of comments every video and that's what I'm most looking forward to. So I'm really happy about this one particularly. Regarding money, I try to do a bit of, you know, uh, donation stuff and it is feasible to get something out of it. It's not a paycheck, but for a student, that's already something. Uh, forget about the month of June, which is uh, one off. Next month is going to be down again. And the money actually uh, helped me to take a better camera, the stand, so I'm trying to uh, spend it to step up the quality of the video channel. And what my main takeaway here is that uh, LibrePay and PayPal are so annoying to use because you can't actually predict whether you will also get the money next month. Whereas Patreon, if you look at it, it's constant through time, it gets slowly bigger, and you know that next month you're roughly going to get that amount of money. PayPal, Libra, LibrePay, LibrePay only work on like April and that was it. Whereas people sometimes I get little money, sometimes a lot, and then now in July, I will probably get not much, if any. So Patreon is the most used um, platform here and for a good reason. It gives you the stability of being able to say, I know that next month I will get some money that I will be able to spend on these, these, and these areas. Regarding YouTube monetization, it's a bit hard to reach, but you can do it. I expect now to do 50 to 60 year monthly. Now that I've been working with uh, advertisement for like a couple of weeks, I expect that to be a bit less, maybe 40 to 50, but it's still decent. It should double what I was doing before. Right now I have 66 cents, so I'm rich. I don't know what to say here. And that's it. It was really a short talk, but uh, don't forget to subscribe, like the video and comment, ring the bell and stuff like that. Uh, there was again another link to, the, to my channel because that was an academy presentation and the academy presentation was not on YouTube, meaning that I actually uh, needed to make people move to that platform and subscribe, but you're already on YouTube so you don't get any excuse. 
10 minutes is not enough. That was the time that I had for the talk. So if you have a specific question, this also comes for you. Uh, if you need more details, statistics, blah, 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 ju uh, just ask me. I actually have much more than what I presented. If you want to say like, what's, uh, what's the average RPM for a YouTuber? How much do you make? I don't know about that, but I can tell you what's working so far for me. So thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe.